Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to Henniger Baptist Church this morning. We're so glad that you've decided to come worship with us here today. Uh, we do have several announcements to make um, this morning. Um, first off, we were looking forward to starting back our Wednesday night classes and our Sunday school this coming week. But the uh, state health department still has us in the very high risk uh, category here in DeKalb County. And because of that, we've just decided we're not going to pick a new date. Uh, we're going to just let you know before we start back next time. We, we've tried now a couple dates and it seems to spike right before that date. And so we're, uh, we're just going to um, be patient. Uh, we don't want to take anybody's health or safety um, for granted and do anything that might cause a problem for one of the families in our church. And so we're just going to um, try to be patient with that. We know we all want to be back doing our normal thing and, and doing it together, but uh, we just are going to hold up a little longer on that um, Sunday school and Wednesday nights for right now. So um, please remember that we will not start back this Wednesday night, but we will let you know as soon as um, we think that it's safe and clear to do that. Um, also, this Saturday, I believe, um, Kristen's going to make an announcement for us um, about the bake sale this Saturday. I told him, I said, you can do it. No, I guess I probably need to do it. Um, so this Saturday, we will be having our bake sale. Um, it will be out underneath the portache. Um, thing you can come through as a drive-through we can show you what we have if you don't feel comfortable enough to get out um, I will need uh, some people to make some desserts if you don't care um, uh, if you can bring those either by Friday night by 8 o'clock p.m. into the gym or not to the gym to the fellowship hall um, or by 7 30 Saturday morning is when I will need those so depending on what you have to do I know people have ball games and things on Friday night um, so that's perfectly fine. Um, I will have a list uh, before the end of church um, if you want to sign up, but I will need some desserts. Uh, this will be money that goes for our Operation Christmas Child for Charlotte Shoeboxes. Um, and then the other thing I was going to let you know that all of our backpacks are packed. Woohoo! <laughs> so I was very shocked and amazed. And um, most of the time when I got off work and got up here at 1230, people had already been here and they'd worked and they'd already had them all done all 200 every day almost and I was like that is amazing and um, so just thank y'all I know it was a crazy week with fall break and things like that and I really thought it was going to take the full two weeks to pack backpacks but we got them done in three days so yay um we will start shoebox packing not till November so uh, those are not due until November the 17th so we won't start packing those till a couple more weeks um, and then the other thing is, um, if you remember, we have new members here. Um, you may wonder what the M&Ms are for. Some people may know that. Um, but beginning of the year, we try to pass out the M&Ms, and you take them, but you have to bring them back full of quarters. So you can eat the candy, but you have to bring me quarters. So Aunt, um, Angela's uh, daughter, Jessica, I just went blank for a minute, um, they were needing, uh, they were trying to build a, it's a it was a concrete slab or something like that. So they were needing some extra money. Um, and so I still had all the quarters um, that we had in our thing so, um, that I've collected so far. So I counted all that up and we ended up having $75 um, that we sent. So I sent that to Jessica. So thank y'all so much for our quarters. There's still some M&Ms over there. If you wanna take that out and fill them back up and bring them back to me, I would appreciate it. But thank y'all so much. Okay, um, I've also been asked to announce um, we are going to do our Halloween trunk of treats this year. Um, things are going to be changed up just a little bit um, to try to help pe keep people safe. Um, and in order to do that, we need to know who's going to participate here from the church. We, we need to know how many plan to have their vehicle out here as part of that and plan on passing out. And so, um, Brother Jim has put a sign-up sheet out on the table uh, where the pastor stands after the service. And if you plan on participating in that this year, if you could sign that sheet and just let us know um, that you plan on being here and plan on having your car part of that um, and your family here, that, that would really help us in the planning and trying to, to keep people spread out and, and safe. So um, please remember that and sign up for that um, as soon as you can. Um, and Brother Roger has a couple things. I think he wanted to just make those announcements himself, so I'm going to let him come up at this time. 
Real quickly, I just want to say how excited I was about the 600 backpacks and all the work that they did. I had never seen that before. We've done shoe boxes, but that blessed my heart at all the things that y'all have done. So let's give the Lord another hand for that. That was amazing. I was so blessed. Also, I'm excited about something that we're going to do for Veterans Day. We want to be a blessing to the veterans of this area. So just uh, out of the blue, I think the Holy Spirit just started dealing with my heart about what can we do for veterans. And so we've, we've thought about it and prayed about it, but this was almost like a divine revelation. We're going to try to feed the veterans that live inside the Henniger City limits on November the 8th. And the way that we're going to do that, we have talked with Howard's Restaurant in Eider. They have given us a great deal. They're going to pack. The menu is fried chicken, green beans, cream potatoes, uh, macaroni and cheese, and a roll. They're going to pack them in the foam boxes. Uh, we're going to have someone to go get those. They'll bring them back, and the people will just drive through. After church on November the 8th, we're going to provide you with a little American flag. We hope we can have some patriotic music out there. We're going to line the sidewalks, kind of social distancing, you know, out there. And we're going to wave our flags while the veterans drive through. And I think it's going to be a great blessing to do that. Now, what we will do, we will, we will do that for the veterans and their families that live inside Henniger City Limits or if you are a member of our church we want to be a blessing to you, and we also will do that for the first responders that work inside uh, our town. And so what we're asking people to do, we'll put it on Facebook. It's going to be in the newspaper. We'll be announcing that. And so people will respond by November the 3rd, and then we'll feed them that Sunday. My second announcement is this. Discovering your spiritual maturity is class 201. It starts tonight. We are so thankful for those that uh, have helped us, Priscilla and Shannon, also Jeanette, to make sure that these books were put together. This class is exciting. It's about the spiritual disciplines, but it will help you to grow. Please get you a book. If you can't be here tonight, I would rather you be here in person. If you can't do that, take one home and watch it online. We want you to grow. I really feel a burden about that. I don't want people just to sit and be stale. So we want you to grow in your faith. So make sure you pick up a book today. And I appreciate these guys. We've had to make lots of decisions and, and communicate back and forth. But I want to tell you this. I said this this morning. It's better to make a slow, patient, right decision than to make a bad decision and have to clean up after it for six months. So I appreciate the wisdom of these deacons and guys that we are working with. The food bank yesterday, Ginger was excited. She's loving that. And they uh, fed 25 families yesterday. Pastorally speaking, we fed 100 families <laughs> yesterday, okay? <laughs> um, also, I had a note here Mr. Nett had left for me to remind you, if you're not going to be able to participate in Trunk of Treats but would like to help in some way, uh, we will accept candy um, up here at the church office if you'd just like to drop off candy and we'll get it to those um, that are going to be out here passing out candy that night and that'd be a big help so do remember that. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? Okay, good. Thank you to everyone that came out and helped with the food bank yesterday. Any other announcements? Okay, if there are no other announcements, I've got a card to read. It says, for all that you do, thank you. Burnell got a good report last Monday concerning his cancer. He is having a break from chemo, and we are giving our Heavenly Father the praise. We thank our church family for every prayer you have prayed for Burnell. We know God's will will be done. We love and appreciate you all so much. Burnell and Linda Gilbert. So we are thankful for that good report. Are there any names that need to be added to our prayer list this morning? I'm sorry, what was that name? The Roland Williams family. Brittany McBriar family. Yeah, 
What was that last name? Lauren Guild. Okay. <laughs> Remember the uh, Castleberry family and Brother Roger as he travels to Mobile to do that funeral. Continue to pray for Tyler and Shannon Payer. I know many of you have been getting those updates on them, and we are thankful that they're progressing and doing better, but they're still got a long way to go and need our prayers. Okay, Donnie Wilburn. Okay, Macklin McCurdy. Okay, Linda McLean, McCain, sorry. Okay, Miss Betty Payer. Okay, Miss Joanne Higgins. Anyone else? Okay. Please continue to remember Miss Sue Slatten as she's been quarantined still, but uh, we understand doing better. Hope she continues to do better. Anyone else? Okay, the Goss family. Okay, continue to pray for Brother Buddy and Miss Odessa. Okay, if there are no others to add, let's say a prayer for these that are on our list this morning. Lord, we just thank you for today, and we thank you for the opportunity to gather in your name. And Lord, we just we thank you for the good reports we've heard today, Lord, and the, the praises that we've heard about, Lord, the, the work that you're doing in people's lives, Lord, and in our church, and we're so thankful for that. But God, we have a list that is so lengthy, and we have so many names and so many that are, are dealing with sickness and pain, Lord, those that are hurting, and Lord, those especially that that need to know you and need a, a relationship with you, God. We just we pray, Lord, that our church would be able to minister to them, be able to lead them to you. God, we just pray we'd be able to be your hands and feet and whatever those needs might be, God, we might help meet them. Lord, we just pray for our service today, Lord, each one that has a part. We pray, Lord, that you'll just help them to, to share the talents and the abilities, Lord, that you've given them uh, in a way that reflects well for you, God, and leads others um, to a closeness with you, God, we pray for Brother Roger today and his message. God, we just pray to allow him to speak the things that he's prepared uh, boldly and freely, Lord, and in the way that you'd want him to share it with us. And God, we just pray for our church, Lord, that you'd continue to let us do the work uh, that you have for us and for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. If you would like to stand and sing with us this morning, our praise team's going to come lead us and sing. Ooh, that's loud, isn't it, y'all? That's loud. 
victory in Jesus. The Bible tells us we're more than conquerors in him. So y'all sing with us this morning as we sing victory in Jesus. over there.
is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. I know y'all might get tired of me reading these words, but sometimes you just need to read them and listen to what they say. And sinners plunged beneath their flood, that flood lose all their guilty states. Lose all of them. Y'all sing this morning, there is a fountain. Can that mic be turned on over there if I just and just do what God tells me to do? I didn't even plan to sing at all, uh, but I think the Lord's speaking to me. I'm going to sing the song Beulah Land that I've done so much. I 
I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. For time won't matter anymore, beautiful land. I'm longing for you, and so. I'm looking now across that river to where my face. a few more days to labor than I will take my heavenly fly. can do that. Let me get some mics gathered right here. (laughs) 
Amen. Bless your, bless your God. Y'all make sure they're going up. Check one. Test. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the saith the Lord, Jesus. Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him. So glad I learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me. Twill be with me till the end. Jesus, Jesus. I'd like for you to take your Bible, if you will, and turn to the book of James, James chapter 4, and then a little bit in James chapter 5 also. So we want to read both of those passages, uh, James chapter 4, 1 through 3, and James chapter 5, 13 through 18. I'm going to preach a sermon today that I've entitled, How to Strengthen Your Prayer Life. It's probably true that a lot of us, and, and I do this sometime, we feel like that our prayer life is a little bit anemic, that maybe it's not as strong as it ought to be, that we, we don't spend enough time praying, and maybe we don't pray in the Spirit or pray with power. Maybe it's just a repetition of words, and I think God wants our prayer life to be on fire, our prayer life to be strong, and our prayer life to be filled with the Spirit, a fervent prayer life. James had that prayer life. James had a nickname. Many of you may know James's nickname, but it was, it was tradition among Jews and written by uh, one of the early church fathers, Eusebius, that the nickname of James was Camel Knees. And James had stayed on his knees so much praying that literally he wore calluses on his kneecaps because he prayed. So we have an author here that's talking about prayer that is not just speaking off the cuff, and we know that he's led by the Holy Spirit, but he is, he's also speaking out of his own experience. James knew what it was to stay on his knees and to call on God. He knew what it meant to spend time praying. 
and he knew the value of prayer. So when we read this today, let's not think about it in terms of just a quick lesson, but let's enter into the heart of James, one who would have to pray because he was cast down. They tried to kill him by throwing him down off a cliff, and, I, and he lived through that, and, and then they stoned him. And he knew what it was like to pray through a lot of things. And then he is challenging us to have a strong prayer life. And I would say to you that the power and strength of our church is only as strong as the power of our prayer life. If we are not a praying church, if we do not bathe our worship time in prayer, if we do not bathe one another in prayer, pray for your pastor, pray for your Sunday school teacher, pray and commune with God. But if we don't have strong prayer lives, we won't have a strong church or a strong Christian life. And so if you will, stand to your feet, and I want to read a number of verses here, maybe about nine or ten verses from these two chapters. But chapter 4, verse 1, James says, From whence comes fightings, or from whence comes wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet ye have not because ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that you may consume it upon your own lust. Now let's go to James chapter 5 and verse 13. And the Bible says there, Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry, let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias or Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this great passage. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of prayer. Lord, it is, it is beyond my wildest imaginations or wildest dreams that I could utter words from my heart and that heaven would hear my voice. Lord, uh, the greatest privilege I have is, is hearing your voice in my heart. But Lord, I just can't get over the fact that we can enter into the Holy of Holies and we can pray and you hear our voice. Lord, what a privilege. Lord, what an opportunity. And I pray, oh God, that you would help us in this time of looking in your word. God, we pray that you will strengthen our prayer lives. God, that we would grasp a hold of praying and God, that we would not be distracted in our prayers. Lord, bless the reading of your holy word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to give you five things that I think will help you to strengthen your prayer life. It will help you to strengthen your prayer life. And I think if you would write these down, it will help you. Very important to me as a pastor that we are a praying church. Very important to you as a church that I'm a praying pastor. We must pray. And we must have strong prayer lives. I would say that the devil will do everything he can to make your prayer life anemic. He'll distract you. He'll burden you. He'll do everything he can. He'll, he'll, give us, he'll get you busy doing a million things besides spending time on your knees calling on God. And yet we have no power without prayer. We must pray. And so we want to look at, first of all, 
If we go back to James chapter one, we must number one, recognize the priority of prayer. Write it down. Recognize in your life the priority of prayer. Now I wanna say, first of all, when we look at this passage of scripture, we're gonna see just in a second that people tried to get things done a different way than praying. So we wanna notice that. We wanna notice, first of all, that there's a lot of things that were going on that they were doing from whence come wars and fightings among you. Come they not hence even of your own lust that war in your members. So the prayer gets way down the list somewhere behind us trying to handle our situations by ourselves. They were trying to handle, and he was saying to those that he was writing to, James would write and say, you, you fight, you, you have war, you are, are going against one another or going against some situation, or, or you're, it's the, it is the effort of handling things all by ourselves and leaving God out. And he said, you, he said, there's fightings. Where do they come from? They, they are birthed out of your own lust, he says. You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you have not. And James is giving us a very important lesson that he's saying to us that being mad or upset or in turmoil about our situations, trying our best to expound our opinion to the whole world, letting everybody know how we feel and giving people a piece of our mind is not the primary way of getting things done. It's really not the power of the church. Now, I know we have the responsibility to proclaim the gospel, but we don't have the responsibility to put our two cents worth in on every situation. As a matter of fact, it may not be worth two cents if you do that. And so here was, you know, the, the church trying to accomplish things by warring. And so that is one extreme. One extreme is to leave God out of the situation and say, I can handle this by myself. I can make these things right. I can make things work. The other thing is that there are two different kinds of wills of, of God. There's the unconditional will of God. There's that unconditional will of God that God is gonna do what God is gonna do and like Wallace Pope was at Nazareth, he was 80 something years old, I think when I got to the church there, but he used to say this, Brother Roger, God will work and none can hinder and God will hinder and none can work. And when God working his unconditional will, God is gonna do what God is gonna do in those areas of his unconditional will. And there's not a prayer this side of heaven that can stop God from doing what God says he's gonna do. He's gonna do it. But there is also the conditional will of God. And so if you take the extreme that says, I'm gonna leave God out and I'm gonna be one of these that fights all the time, I'm gonna be in turmoil and I'm gonna give my two cents worth to the world, you leave God out. But there's also another extreme that people sometimes say, God is a sovereign God and God's gonna do what God is gonna do. That is called monergism. It is the work of God that says that God will do things no matter what I do, God's gonna do that. And there is a part of God's will that is that kind of will that, that God says is unconditional. But God also says that, and he shows us many times in the word of God, that there is the conditional will of God. That God doing what God is gonna do, he conditions it upon our prayer. There were many things that, that Jesus Christ said that he could not do in Nazareth because of their unbelief. And God says, it is my will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And yet we know that that doesn't occur, but I'll tell you this, since it is God's will that everybody come to know the Lord, 
then we ought to be praying for lost and we ought to be praying. We ought to be the kind of church that says, we don't want anything that God has available for us to be withheld on the basis of the fact that we did not fulfill our opportunity and our obligation to pray. So there is the priority of prayer. And James simply says it like this. You have not because you ask not. You fight in war, but you don't have because you didn't ask. And he's telling us, he's giving us a lesson about prayer that there ought to be a priority when we are approaching God about those things of his conditional will that says if we just ask him, God is waiting. Why would God do that? Why does it God just leave us out of it all together? And why does it God just work and do whatever God is going to do? And we never have to pray and we never have to commune with him. God, because he wants us to grow in our relationship with him and God wants us to grow in maturity. God wants us to grow in faith. God allows us to enter into his will by praying and staying on our knees before God and calling on God. And God does things in response to his children who are calling on him and asking him to do something. And God does it. God does it. Our little grandson was at our house. This yesterday, a lot of our children got to come home and we were so thrilled. But I'm telling you, when he asked for something, Pop Pop gets it. All he has to do is ask, ask. And James is teaching us a lesson that there's a priority of prayer that you don't get the things that God has for you by fussing, fighting, and expounding your opinion, but rather by calling upon Almighty God. Number two, avoid the perversion of prayer. Avoid the perversion of prayer. It is listed here in James chapter, th- chapter four. He said this, Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your own lust. You ask and you have not. He said, you have not because you ask not, but when you do ask, you're asking with the wrong motive. You see, our praying, our praying is this, to get God's will done on earth. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we are calling upon God, we are praying with our Bible open, understanding the promises of God and God's unconditional will and also the conditional will of God. But we're calling upon God and we're saying, oh God, your will that is in heaven, let it be done on earth here in my life in this moment. But the perversion of prayer is to say, Lord, let my will on earth be done in heaven. That's a perversion of prayer. And it is this attitude that is so prevailing today in people's prayer lives and so prevailing sometimes in preaching when people say, you have power in your own words. All you have to do is name it and claim it and forget all the rest. God will give you whatever you want. And that what James says is this. He says, don't be the kind of person that just goes to God with with all of these things that are motivated not by the word of God, not motivated by the Christian wall that you have with God, but motivated by your own lust. He said, you have not, or you ask, and you have not because you miss the mark when you pray. You're asking amiss. And a lot of times we just come to God with our list of things that our motives are wrong and we need to check our motives. If you wanna have power in your praying, you must be the kind of person that gets the prayer in order 
and praise, oh God, I want your will to be done, your will in heaven to be done on earth. Lord, whatever your will is in my life, oh God, reveal to me your will and God will speak to you his word and he will redirect your praying. God will give you the rhema word of God, which is the Holy Spirit of God speaking to you in your specific situation. He will always speak lining up with the written word of God, but he will speak to you in your situation and he'll show you what his will is in your life. Now, sometimes he won't reveal that, but the Lord, when he reveals your will and you, his will, and you start praying in the power of the spirit, I'm telling you what your prayer life changes. Your prayer life changes. That's why I say, pray with your Bible open. What is God's will? What is God's will? We were sitting in church one time and there was a lady I was sitting by that had breast cancer. And God began to speak to my heart. He said when she was going to have a PET scan, I think the, the next week, God began to speak to my heart and God said, she is healed. I heard it just like, I mean, th this couple right here taught me when I was a little bitty boy, listen to the Holy Spirit. Mind the Holy Spirit, hear the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we go in our prayer life and our prayer life is perverted because we have not heard from God and we don't even know what to pray. But when God spoke to me, I said, let's go to the altar. You're healed. Now I don't do that off the cuff, but we got in that altar and you, you talk about the spirit of God getting a hold of my praying. When I started praying over her to be healed, it wasn't my words, it wasn't my will, it was the will of heaven being done on the earth. And God will, God will empower our prayer life when we get our prayer life in order. It's too many Christians have their prayer life all out of order. It's out of order. So we need to avoid the perversion of prayer. Number three, follow the prescription of prayer. Follow the prescription of prayer. And we're gonna go to chapter five, verse 13. This is just like a prescription. He says, is any among you afflicted? It's like, it's like going to the doctor's office. And he says, are you afflicted? I'm gonna tell, tell you what you need to do to work that out. Let him pray. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. That word right there for afflicted, it's a general term, which means to suffer physical pain, hardship, troubles, problems, difficulties, evils, or distress of all various kinds. Just to feel like things are just coming against you. I mean, you're just troubled. You're just feeling suffering. Is there any among you that are afflicted? It is all kinds of affliction to your spirit, to your emotions, to your body, to your mind. And you're feeling that in your life and you're feeling like you're in distress and it happens so easy. And I got to looking at this and the Holy Spirit began to say to me, you know, there's two options in this verse. There's the option of being afflicted and there's the option of being happy. Look in the verse. It says there that if you are afflicted, if you're afflicted, pray. But if you're merry, praise. And I, the more I looked at that, the more I realized that a lot of times I'm afflicted when I ought to be happy. <laughs> Yesterday, we were trying to get ready for all of our kids. We had everybody, Gabe is about to take an engineering test, so he didn't get to come home, but we had them there. I got up yesterday morning and I, I, I'm a, I want things to be perfect when they come home. I mean, I think I have, I have this imagination of just everything just being just perfect when they come in, you know, and it never happens just like that. 
But yesterday, Ginger and I were working. She was working in a bedroom, getting it ready. And I was sweeping a floor and I was like, I got to hurry. And, get, and I don't know what it was. I don't understand my own emotions at that point, but I was feeling distressed. I was like, I don't know. I was like, I, I don't know if we're ever going to get everything done. And I, I want things to be right for these kids when they get home. And I just love them so much. And I'm so happy to see them. We had not seen Luke in about nine weeks. He's working at Home Depot, going to school and coaching volleyball. And he just hadn't got to come home. He had to leave and go back to work this afternoon. And I'm like, man, that kid's doing too much. But I wanted things to be good. And I'm sweeping. And then this verse comes to my mind. I'm sitting there sweeping. And, and I'm just inside. I'm just like, I don't even understand how I feel. But I feel a little bit agitated. Because I just can't. I want things to be right. And I don't know if we're going to make it or not. And then God just spoke to my heart and said, do you want to be, uh, do you want to be afflicted? Or do you want to be Mary? Your choice. Your choice. And I started sweeping. And I was just sweeping that floor. And I was going, God, thank you, God, for my family. Now, nobody saw me. But, and I got, I got teary-eyed up, but I was going, oh, God, thank you. Thank you for my kids. Thank you, God, that they're coming home. Lord, thank you that we're going to have this fellowship time together. Thank you, oh, God. And then that Rinaldi guy came on. I had that college game day on. And while I was sweeping, they, he did this, uh, this special about a little eight-year-old boy that has cancer. And the Alabama players ministered to him. And I'm listening to that about an eight-year-old kid having cancer. And, and all at once, instead of being afflicted, I was praising God. So I really want to focus on this and tell you most of the time when we are afflicted, it's really our own attitude that needs to change, not our circumstances. And I would like for you really to underline this verse and say, it's my choice. I can either be aggravated because if, you, if you've got qualities, you know, I have uh, like, I, I dream of things being perfect sometime. And you never, when you're like that, you never get it that way. But you always know when it's not. And so you have to say, well, I, can, I, can, I need to rejoice right now at what God's done. So here is a choice that we have about whether we want to be happy or not. Well, do you know, I, I've enjoyed this pastor. Y'all been so good to us on Pastor Appreciation Day. You know, it's been so awesome. So awesome. I opened up a gift. I opened up a gift at home. And did you know that Brian and Tina Wills and Cammie and Jack, you know what they gave me? And I put them on for y'all today. Look at this. It's my happy socks. They go all the way up to your knee. I got them on both, both of these. It's my happy socks. And there's a lesson in that. Some of you got your old stinky socks on that you wore yesterday. You need to take those off and put on your happy socks. And quit being so afflicted. I'm telling you. Don't be so afflicted. Praise the Lord for what he's done for you. So this suffering are those that are going through hardships and troubles and problems and difficulties. And James just says, if there's anybody among you that is afflicted, let him pray. And we should because there are times when we get so weary that no matter what we do, the only way out is to pray. But I also want to suggest to you that you can also pray and praise your way out of affliction. Is any sick among you? Is anybody sick among you? That word sick there is the Greek word komno, which means primarily to be weary or discouraged in one's soul. But it also can be to be sick in body. So it doesn't exclusively mean here that somebody is physically sick. It doesn't exclusively mean that, although we want to include that, 
I just want you to know that that's not exclusively what that is saying. It's talking about that a person, that word can be, it primarily means to be weary or discouraged in one's soul or to be sick or ill. But has any person got to the place where you can't handle it on your own? It's one of the reasons that we take this prayer list up here and we take that time to pray over people and we should take that seriously. Take that home and lay that out and pray over those people who are going through something that they cannot handle on their own when a person's got cancer or when a person's lost a loved one or when a person's got COVID-19 or when a person goes through divorce or when a person loses their job or when a person loses their spouse. They need the church to pray pray. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Primarily elders means pastors, but it also, I think, points to those that are leaders in the church. And for years, I've practiced this as a pastor that We would go when people got to the place where they couldn't handle anything in their life anymore. We've had them to call us and I've, I've had deacons to go with me inside homes and we would take just a little bottle, bottle of olive oil. And you talk about a prayer time. We'd go over their door facings and just pray, oh God, guard this home, Lord. Watch over these people. Lord, the enemy has come against their home. The enemy has come against their health. God, they are in a situation where they've got to call out for help to their church. And we'd get in there and you talk about God moving. When you get inside somebody's home and you start praying for God to deliver them, God moves when we pray like that. So he said, is, is there any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And then I want you to understand this. We follow the prescription of prayer. There is that, that prescription for you to pray for yourself and prescription number two, to pray for others. Number, verse 15, understand the power of prayer. If we are going to strengthen our prayer life, we can't be of such that says whatever God is going to do, God is going to do, and it doesn't matter what I say. There's no reason for me to pray because it's going to be whatever it's going to be. You know, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. But God says, and James is saying here, that our prayer life can make a difference. (laughs) It can change circumstances. Those who are sick can be healed. Those who are under distress can be freed if we will pray. And if a church, and I know the COVID-19 changes things, but there's a lot of heartbroken people out there that if they knew that enough people would love them and pray over them in here, they would come from out there into here to help people gather around them so that they could be delivered from a life that's literally ripping their heart out. And we... We must be a praying church. Praying. Praying so that if somebody comes to the altar, there are people that are saying, I'm sitting here waiting, God, for you to put somebody in that altar so I can come around them and I can pray over them. Oh, I can remember when people just... You know, you get in the altar and the church start praying and heaven comes down. There's power in prayer. There's power in prayer. Here's what the word of God says. And the prayer of faith will save the sick. The prayer of faith. And I believe that faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes from the word of God and God God speaks that faith in our heart by his word. And sometimes God speaks to us specifically about situations and he empowers our praying in a way that you hit second gear. Too many, too many uh, Christians are praying in low hilly. We had an old army truck. Daddy would buy a truck sometime that ought not to be on the road, but we used them anyway. And we had an old army truck one time that was converted to a potato truck and a bulk bed. 
And that had a high hilly and high level and low hilly and low level was the gears. I was coming off of, at the lake, double bridges, coming off with a load of potatoes and my brakes went out. And I rammed that thing up into a low hilly and turned that turn, spilled potatoes. I think some of them went in the lake. I went so fast up through there. But I was in low hilly. Some of us in our prayer life, our prayer life is so dull, I don't even know what gear to call it. But we need to get out of that sometime. You've heard those old saints of God pray when they'd pray in the power of the Spirit and they'd hit second gear and then third gear and then finally you'd realize it wasn't even them anymore. It was the Holy Spirit of God that was praying through them in power and strength. Where is that in the church of God in the day that we live? Where is that power? That kind of strength and power. He said, they sh- and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In er- energio is the word, ergos is to work. That effectual fervent is a translation, two words in English that's translating that one Greek word which talks about an energized prayer that accomplishes something. They, they kind of pray in where you are praying in the spirit. You're praying with power. You're praying with strength. And you know that God is at work through your praying. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much availeth much. Understand the power of prayer, that there's something about praying in the spirit that God wants to do something amazing. God wants to do something mighty uh, as we pray. Number five, learn from a precedent of prayer. James gives us an example. He shows us somebody that had an example of prayer. A precedent is an earlier event or action that is regarded as an example or guide to be considered in subsequent similar circumstances. So Elijah becomes a precedent, not the precedent, but a precedent of how to pray. And the Bible says Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Now that passage of scripture comes from 1 Kings chapter 18 and and chapter 17. God had spoken to Elijah, and Elijah prayed that it not rain, and it didn't rain for three and a half years. Amen. Then in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 1, and it came to pass after many days, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. God spoke to Elijah. Elijah wasn't just claiming something like people say to do today. If you want a million dollars, just say, Lord, I claim that I'm going to have a million dollars by next week. No, Elijah heard from God. That's why I say pray with the word of God open. But the Lord said, go show thyself unto Ahab and I will send rain upon the earth. The Bible says that Elijah went to show himself to Ahab. And you remember in 1 Kings 18, where the prophets of Baal were destroyed, where Elijah called fire down from heaven. But after that great challenge and all of those things that occurred, the Bible said that Elijah, he went and prayed. And in verse 42, so Ahab went up to eat and drink and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel And he cast himself down upon the earth and he put his face between his knees and he prayed. Elijah was taking on the physical posture 
of a Hebrew woman who was with child and about to deliver. He, he got down and he, he put his head between his knees and he prayed. It's called to travail before the Lord. He had already heard the word of God, but he travailed before the Lord like a person in labor. And he cried out, oh God, let it rain. Let it rain. And Elijah, as he travailed before the Lord, was able to stop a three and a half year drought. It amazes me in the day that we live that we're victims of everything. The church is a victim of COVID-19 and we can't pray it away. We're a victim of broken homes and broken lives and heartache. But I believe that if the church would travail like a woman in labor, believing the word of God and crying out to God, like we used to cry out to God, God would heal our land. He would hear our prayer and we could call down power from heaven and the will of heaven would be done on earth in the middle of our life and we wouldn't have to live like we're living if we would pray. We got to pray. I've got a daughter was at our house yesterday, Natalie. Cody is her husband. Natalie's a nurse at Huntsville Hospital. She's six months pregnant. She came in yesterday and, boy, she's showing, isn't she? <laughs> she's not very tall. She's like, I wish I were, maybe I need to be taller. That way my belly would go up instead of out. But we've seen the, we've seen the sonogram. We get a picture every week. She'll show us her belly in a picture from the side and we can go back and scroll and watch. There is every evidence, every evidence that there's a baby in her tummy. And when she goes to the doctor and she goes into labor, I'm going to be out there in the waiting room and in my spirit, I'm going to be going, push, baby, push. 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 Travail. Because there's a blessing in your tummy that's going to bless us all. The church has forgotten to push. We've lost the ability to travail. Our prayer lives are anemic. And we cannot call on God like the church used to call on God. I know that this altar, and we may have to spread out. I believe God will protect us. But during the invitation, God may be calling you to get on your knees and say, Oh God, empower my prayer life. Let me once again, oh God, push. Because your word says there's all kinds of blessings that are to be delivered to us. And yet they are dependent because they're conditioned upon our prayer. And God, I don't want to miss it. So if I have to travail in the altar, oh God, for your will to be done, then I'm going to be in the altar and I'm going to call on you. While we come with a song, would you stand to your feet? Whatever God leads you to do, would you come? Would you come? Come and call on God. Cry out to God. Oh God, we need you. We need you. Find a place to pray. You may want to pray in your seat, but God may be leading you to come and get down on your knees and call on God in this altar. We need to, we need to push. We need to travail before God and call upon the Lord. Would you come while we sing? Would you come? (laughs) 
Would you come? Would you mind the Lord? Would you come to this altar and call upon the Lord today? Would you come? Would you come and call upon God? Would you come? Would you come? Call upon the Lord. Oh, God, we pray, God, that you'll heal our land, heal our hearts, oh, God. Help us to walk, Lord, in, in your will, God, for your glory. Would you call on the Lord? Call on the Lord, church. Cry out to God. While they just play softly, while they just play softly. Jim, Jim, I don't want to hinder you. Jim, Gunner, will you come? Bless him, God. Bless him, Lord. Lord, we just come to you this morning, Father. We just want to lift you up and... give you the praise and the yes. glory that you deserve. Father, yes. first we, we just ask for your forgiveness when we fail you, Father. We're, we're sorry we just beg for your forgiveness this morning, Father. And We know that, that you forgive us and, and forget those things that we do, Father, when we come humbly and ask for forgiveness. And Father, I first off ask that you just do that. Bless him, God. Father, I just pray that you just touch our church and Father I just pray that you just give us the, the confidence and the and the will and the desire to, to have a relationship with you Father that we just talk to you like we do our brother yes. our mother our, our spouse yes. Father I, ju I just pray that you just anoint this church with a, a desire to to win souls for you Father yes. Father I just pray that, that we just be what you'd have us to be, Father. We we know there are many things going on in our our city and our, our our community and Father our country. And Father, I just pray that is is children of yours, Father, that would just reach to you daily to have a desire to be pleasing to you. Father, I just pray that you just heal our church, those that are suffering because of sickness or situations or whatever. Father, I just pray that, that you just be real in each circumstance. Father, I just pray that you just heal our country. Father, that you just be real to, to those that don't seem like you could be real too, Father. Father, I know that, that we just have failed you in so many ways, Father, and Father, I just appreciate you speaking to our pastor this morning and, and him speaking to us, Father. And Father, I just pray that, him, oh that this church would have a desire to be pleasing to you in everything that we do, Father. Father, I just pray that you just, as Brother Roger preached a few weeks ago, Father, you just build a hedge up around yes, us, Father, God. and protect us and yes, allow Lord. us to go out into this lost and dying world and proclaim your son Jesus who died on a cross for us and for this lost and dying world. Father, I just pray that you just touch each heart that's here today. Father, each heart that's listening over the airwaves and through the internet, Father, that they just open their hearts to you, Father, and draw closer to you. Father, again, I just can't thank you and praise you enough. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. Bless you, brother. Just continue to pray while these are praying.
I want to take just a second, if I can, to recognize, and uh, we have six today that have finished their uh, new member training that are coming to join our church. They will be voted on tonight during our business meeting. But uh, first, I would like to call Josh and Shelby Hudgens forward and little Elsie that is so sweet. She's awesome. And we want to give them this. This is their completion of the new member training. And this is a great young couple. I appreciate them. Let's give them a hand. So, so excited. Y'all can just stay right. If y'all want to spread out just a little bit, though. Uh, and I want somebody to snap a picture of these new families. If I don't know if somebody's got a cell phone that you were playing games on during my sermon. But if you, <laughs> if you will, snap a picture of these. Also, my Uncle Tommy and Aunt Martha, y'all come. What a blessing. They, they, these folks, I'm telling you, I love them so much. And then they have completed their class also and will be presented tonight during our business meeting for full membership of the church. And then also, I've been talking with also Rodney and Becky Hammonds. Uh, they are coming today and they've completed their class also and will be presented tonight for membership in our church. I love y'all. Okay. Did somebody take a picture of these? Just really quickly, just get a picture of these that are here. All right, let's give them another hand while they go back to their seat, and we appreciate them so much. I think I've done everything. Okay, going to give everybody a minute to get their mask on. Uh, do remember, we will have a business meeting, uh, our monthly business meeting tonight, right before our class starts. So remember that. Don't forget to get your book for the new class starting tonight, the 201 class. Um, you can tell the difference between it and your previous book. It's got a green cover. So make sure you get one of the green ones. Um, and also remember, our offering basket is over here on the side. Um, since we're not able to pass plates at this time. So we'll just go ahead and start over here on this side. 